Good morning everybody, it's 9 o'clock and 9 o'clock is with me, Father Warner. Today we are in the Thursday of the 5th week of Lent. Our text today is taken from John chapter 8, verse 51 to 59. And I've simply entitled today's teaching, I Am. Let's read the text first. If you can open your Bibles and keep your Bibles open for these teachings because John chapter 8 is a little tough sometimes to wrap your head around. So, chapter 8, verse 51 to 59. Very truly I tell you, whoever keeps my word will never see death. The Jews then said to him, Now we know that you have a demon. Abraham died, and so did the prophets. Yet you say, whoever keeps my word will never taste death. Are you greater than our father Abraham who died? The prophets also died. Who do you claim to be? Jesus answered, If I glorify myself, my glory is nothing. It is my Father who glorifies me, he of whom you say he is our God, though you do not know him. But I know him. If I would say that I do, if I do not know him, I would be a liar like you. But I do know him and I keep his word. Your ancestor Abraham rejoiced that he would see my day. He saw it and was glad. Then the Jews said to him, You are not yet fifty years old, and have you seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, before Abraham was, I am. So they picked up stones to throw at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now, um, you have to follow this entire uh, text by listening to the teachings that I've done the previous days. If you just listen to it in isolation, you won't be able to wrap your head entirely around it. Uh, remember, we are in the Temple of Jerusalem. Uh, this is the second recorded incident of Jesus coming to the Temple of Jerusalem for the Feast of the Tabernacles in the Gospel of John. He comes to Jerusalem several times and chapters 7 and 8 are events that record what happened prior to the Feast of the Tabernacles, what happens during the Feast of the Tabernacles and then finally what happens after the Feast of the Tabernacles till Jesus leaves the Temple as we heard it today. And I'm going to make references also uh, to the text that we did yesterday. So, we'll constantly make references up and down. Now, quite clearly, the Jews seem to have lost it. Yeah, uh, I say this because, you know, they start getting so personal with Jesus. Um, they call him a Samaritan. They several times insinuate that he has demons in him. They have absolutely nothing concrete to accuse Jesus of. So, if you look at your text right now, in chapter 8, verse 48, the Jews said to him, Are we not right in saying that you are a Samaritan? And then they go on to say, You have a demon. They claim he is possessed. Um, this was a racial slur, make no mistake. The Jews detested the Samaritans. I mean, they simply detested them. I don't know whether I've explained this to you, but if you were traveling from Galilee to Jerusalem, from Galilee to Judea, Jerusalem being the capital of Judea, in between the two uh, territories was the Samaritan territory. And the Jews would rather walk several days extra around it than walk through the Samaritan territory. That is why in the Gospel of John, Jesus walking through Samaritan ter territory encounters the woman at the well and she is actually making fun of him. She says, you a Jew, you a rabbi, you are asking me for water to drink. I mean, like, come on. Now, previously, in um, the same chapter, in chapter 8, you will realize that they insinuated, in verse 41, they insinuated that Jesus was of illegitimate birth. Let me read this. You are indeed doing what your father does. They said to him, we are not 
illegitimate children. And before this, they even ask him, well, who is your father? We have heard that text also. Who is your father? Where is your father? And who is your father? But nothing stops our Lord from declaring the truth. Remember, already in chapter 8, he has said to us, if you continue to abide in me, the truth will set you free. Nothing stops Jesus from declaring the truth of who he is. He is the great I am. And we hear this at the end of uh, in verse 58. Incidentally, he also said it in chapter 8, verse 24. But in the RSV translation, it is recorded as, they said to him, sorry, in 24, he says, I told you that you would die in your sin, for you will die in your sin unless you believe that I am. And then the RSV translation adds the word he, but he clearly declares he is the great I am. So in twice in chapter 8, he will declare himself the great I am. Now, to us living in this modern age, you know, when you say I am, it almost sounds like a conjugation and grammar. But not to a Jew. Notice that Jesus does not say, before Abraham was, I was. He says, before Abraham was, I am. The first Jew to hear those words, I am, was Moses. If you look at your Bibles and you go to Exodus chapter 3 verse 14, in Exodus, from a burning bush, I mean, imagine Moses had to go back and tell them, well, God spoke to me. What did God look like? He was a burning bush. They might have thought he was a little off his head. But God sends Moses and God says to Moses, when Moses asks, who should I say has sent me? God says, I am. Tell them, I am, I am has sent you. I am who I am. Thus you shall say to the sons of Israel, I am has sent me to you. Now, the Jews listening to Jesus, proclaiming the very same words that they had in their law, in the book of Exodus, which was their law, chapter 3, verse 14, the Jews now listening to Jesus, proclaiming these words, knew right away that Jesus was claiming to be God. Nothing short of it. Before Abraham was, I am. Now, anyone who claims to bear the divine title name of God would incur one punishment, and that was death by stoning. This was the punishment for blasphemy. And it is no wonder that verse 59 tells us that they picked up stones to throw at him. Now, John's Gospel is the only one to have seven of these I am statements of Jesus, seven of them, um, ego I me, that's the translation uh, in Greek, ego I me, the seven statements of Jesus. These seven statements of Jesus is John's presentation of who Jesus is. The I am statements in the fourth, go fourth gospel, in the gospel of John, make known Jesus as the source of life. He is the source of abundant grace. And in that sense, they signal the very presence of God. Now, contrast the I am statements, and this is very, very important to do, because we must do this. Contrast the I am statements to the I am not statements of John the Baptist in the beginning of the same gospel. So if you look at St. John's Gospel, chapter 1, verse 20, verse 21, verse 27, uh, John chapter 3, verse 28, John has I am not statements. And John confesses, one, I am not the Messiah. He says, I am not Elijah. Then he says, I am not worthy to untie the thongs of his sandals and he'll go on. The I am not statements. So John was very clear who he was not. And Jesus, on the other hand, is so clear who he is. 
it is undeniable who Jesus is claiming to be. He is God. And as I said, even the Jews understood what he was saying, and that is why they picked up stones. They understood clearly that he was claiming to be God. Make no mistake, in all their hate, in all the name-calling that they did to our Lord, that we have spoken of earlier, by picking up the stones to stone him, they actually acknowledged that he is God. Yeah? by simply picking up, because they heard him say he is God. And then they pick up stones, because for them, this is blasphemy. But if they thought that Jesus was, you know, a little, if I may say, off his mind, they would have said, ah, this guy, you know, he's not all there. Let him go. Oh, no, no, no. They knew clearly what Jesus was saying. Now, the question that we need to ask ourselves is, if I accept Jesus as God, as my God, then I will have to do everything that he says. Yesterday, Jesus said to us in chapter 8, verse 31, if you wish to abide, the word is abide, if you wish to abide in my word, if you abide in my word, then very clearly he said, only then can you be my disciples. Only then, he says, will you know the truth. Only then will the truth will set you free. Only then, verse 35, you will have a permanent place with me. Only then, he says, the Son will make you free and you will be, as Jesus promises in verse 36, you will be free indeed. And in verse 51 of today, he says very clearly, you will never see death. You will never see death. If you abide in my word. So I want to say this to you. The choices that we make, and I said this at Mass yesterday, and I do hope you watch the Mass, because very often at Mass I do not do a teaching as I do here. I, I, I appeal more to the heart. And yesterday at Mass I said, the choices that you and I make have eternal consequences. I may make a choice for today, but the choice I make, the consequences that that choice has is forever. You know, um, yesterday I, um, or day before yesterday, I had a friend come over, Kevin and his wife, uh, Pam, and uh, it was their silver wedding and I was talking to them after mass with their lovely son. Um, and I said to their son, I said, um, you know, most of us continue to preserve our life. We work towards our, our life. We are not working towards our soul. We want to preserve our life, well as we let go of our soul. And I want to say this to you. Work so that our souls may be preserved. Your life will end at some stage. Your soul is eternal. Jesus says, the choices, not Jesus says, or rather from the words of Jesus, we conclude that the choices we make have eternal consequences. And in fact, he says it also. He said it yesterday. The choices that we make, not in so many words. He says, I told you, you will die in your sin. You will die in your sin unless you believe that I am he. The choices that I make today have eternal consequences. So, here's the, with this I want to end. Do we need more proof? What really will it take us to bow down to His Majesty? You know, of late I have met um, many young people caught up in their own excuses. Uh, I have really been suffering in my heart with my own parish here at St. Stephen's when I find young people missing, young couples missing. People just not coming to church. And I'm sure this is a phenomenon everywhere. We tend to fool ourselves very often because we see our church is relatively crowded. But so many people live for the preservation of their life on earth rather than for their souls, eternal souls, which could be damned. So, so many people making excuses, denying God, I said this uh, two Sundays ago. I was really, really upset when I came to know that one of my parishioners 
told her 12 standards going son and I know several of them um, you don't need to go to church on a Sunday you need to sit home and study and I'm thinking to myself how can a mother teach her child to break willfully the commandments of God would that same mother say my son I give you permission to go and fornicate with another woman break that commandment too my son I give you permission to steal from our house break that commandment too you see we are breaking God's commandments we are denying God's existence we are denying the faith and um, I, I agonize and I ask myself sometimes what can I do to convince people otherwise the answer really is in God's word I want you to read it I want you to devour it I want you to study it I want you to pour over it God and his word are one because here we will find the great I am and when you do what I call knee mail not email knee mail on your knees when you do email when you do knee mail him not email God when you do knee mail God he will be happy to hear from you so let us pray for one another you pray for me I pray for you let us pray for the souls of all those who have abandoned God here on earth and ask God in the season of Lent for a contrite heart for our own sinfulness you and I know our failings beg the Lord say Lord I am sinful I know my own sins pardon me forgive me I am so ashamed when I think of how often I give in to sin I live for the day rather than preserve my soul for all eternity Amen the Lord be with you and may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you all. Uh, don't forget to like this video. Leave me your comments. Um, I read a couple of them. Somebody said to me, uh, when I met them, they said, Father, I write a comment. I, it's very hard to put a comment to a face, but I'm kind of getting the names. I also noticed that some of you, for the mass intention, put several intentions, the same person putting several intentions. Uh, for the mass I of course see it later but we keep you all in our prayers there have been several of you writing in asking in for prayers for your loved ones your relatives who are sick I want to assure you I pray for them I pray for them and God bless you God bless your love for me and pray for me pray for yourself also have a good day everybody to our donors of the to the Lovejoy Hope Foundation thank you thank you and thank you